Daniel Dialatone. Uh, yeah, as uh, I don't think I have that many subscribers that are like that into me enough to like really wonder where Daniel Dial, Dial where Daniel Dialatone has been all this time. But uh, for those who are interested, just some updates. Uh, I think most of you probably do follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, but there might be some who don't. And uh, so these are for those folks who who aren't yet in the know. So yeah, I was working on a lot of uh, DJ mixers, powered mixing monitors, that sort of my main thing uh but then i started making enough money where i work for you know doing some uh sheet metal fabrication stuff uh as it sounds it's a job that actually can get you quite a decent bit of money if you this place i work at doesn't pay that great at the beginning and even like when you're there for a while the pay still isn't that amazing but it's sort of a place that has a mission statement a lot of their profits go to uh, um, support uh, Chicago uh, homeless shelters and that's one of the reasons why I don't mind you know taking taking a hit in pay because uh, um, it's going to people who who uh, need it a lot more than I do uh, but anyways, that is, because I'm making enough money at that, I don't have to uh, bust my ass doing Daniel Dialatone stuff because I was having to do that before in order to make uh, ends meet, literally making rent. Uh, you know, I try to keep, believe it or not, uh, I try to keep my prices at a in a way so that you know, I'm not trying to get rich of this off this stuff. I just like uh, I don't know, just sort of um, yeah, just trying to create a legacy, you know, of, uh, of what I'm able to do with audio equipment, uh, make it known that um, that uh, those who know my history, yeah, you know, the place I used to work at before. Um, <laughs> why haven't I let that go yet? Uh, but, um, yeah, just, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, just to show that I am one of the reasons why that place, you know, they, why they have that reputation that they do is sounding really great. So I'm just trying to, uh, carry on that legacy, you know, with what I do on the side. And I am going to still uh, do DJ mixers and power mixing monitors in the future. Um, just not as many, you know, uh, because now that I don't have to spend money, at, spend time doing that because of money uh, things, uh, I'm actually able to play guitar a little bit more. It's actually... Uh, you know, a lifelong uh, thing that I've done, although not so lifelong because I had to put it a, aside for quite a few years. Again, just to, you know, work on audio equipment and then, you know, to, then ultimately just to, you know, pay the bills and everything. But now that I have enough money to, to just not have to do that you know I, I have been playing guitar a bit I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do with it it's just something I get enjoyment out of uh, but anyways I am going to keep doing some kind of audio thing uh, so I will be around um, so yeah, you can look forward to that I guess uh, so that's just an update of what's going on with me. Also, I'm actually going to be moving uh, a little further to the south side of Chicago. Um, it's actually going to be great for this because 
I'll show this. <laughs> I'll show this to you. This place is super tight. It's literally like a closet, you know, like the things, the things that I've been doing that people really dig, you know, it's, it has been out of this little tiny shack of a room. Um, but this new apartment that I'm going to, it's actually cheaper, but the space that I'll be able to do this in is much bigger. Um, and that might be a reason why there's a good possibility that I will do a lot more audio stuff because there'll be so much a nicer thing. Honestly, sometimes I think about coming in here and working on stuff and just, I don't know. I'm, I'm someone who gets either motivated or unmotivated just by the environment of where I'm at. You know, um, I want to enjoy what I'm doing. You know, I don't like being forced to do what I do. I just, I want to, when I do something, it's because I love to do it. Uh, and that might make it that. Uh, in fact, I'll actually be able to set my desk up exactly the same way I had it when I was at Black Line Audio. You know, having, you know, uh, lots of stuff within reach and then plenty of storage for, for parts and things. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, there is a part two to this. It's actually the reason why I thought I would make a video anyway. Um, so I am getting into playing guitar a lot more. That means, you know, pedals for me. Uh, and I've been, yeah, I, I figured, okay, I'll make a whole bunch of my own patch cables. Um... And I got, you know, these semi-decent connectors off of eBay. I'm sure they're not up to boutique spec. Um, at some point, I may, you know, switch out all my cabling to nicer things. If I, you know, with me, I only do things if I can actually hear the difference. And I do believe there is a difference in connectors. I believe that every little thing, even if it's not noticeable, there is a difference. And there's good reason, you know, electrons moving through all these sorts of different metals that are some are made better than others. And of course, that's going to do something. Um, uh, sometimes it's too small to be measured, but... I have come into situations where even though you're not really able to scientifically measure why it sounds better, it just, it just does. But anyway, I, I, I did these patch cables. One notice, <laughs> I, I noticed a really bad difference when I was doing these. It was being, my, uh, yeah, my signal was being attenuated, like the top end of it, more like a capacitive attenuation like a filter almost I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on so I literally put my meter uh, you know on the you know the two points of contact here and it was measuring resistance like like um, like around 4k or down even down to 1k resistance on different cables and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on uh, <laughs> I finally figured out. Um, I don't know. So, you can see this. <laughs> Take that off. You can see these flaps that, um, that crimp down around this thing. Uh, the, you know, the, the jacket of the cable. Well, what had happened was I had... I got really freaking strong hands from doing sheet metal stuff. Uh, I was just torquing down so hard on these things that it was actually, I don't know how, but it was causing, um, somehow it was actually causing, um, the uh, the shield 
the shield leads to cut into um, the insulation of this. Not a much, not so much that it makes contact, but I think it was like close enough that you know there is material, uh, insulating material can act like a capacitor if the two metal are close enough. Um, so I think it was actually literally acting sort of like a capacitor. Um, but anyways, yeah, it, as, as soon as I, you know, freed these up, you measured it again, you know, uh, open, open circuit, you know, so it was, so that's what my problem was. So if you've made patch cables and, um, for some freak reason, or not just patch cables, maybe even your, you know, the cable going from your guitar to your pedal board or, um, you know, uh, if you're noticing weird attenuation and you can measure resistance on the, um, between these two contact points, maybe if you, you don't measure any resistance, maybe put it on the capacitance uh, meter and see what that's saying. If, you know, if it's like, yeah, if, if it looks like a filter, then it is a filter. Um, so you just have to know, I know all this, <laughs> I have a way to trail on and on and on and on and on and tangent and all this bullshit. And people are like, why don't you just say the simple thing in the beginning and then ramble on? <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm a, yeah, the journey to the truth with me is always very long, unfortunately. So yeah, so when you're doing these things and you go to crimp, crimp these things, do it enough so that it has good grip, but don't, especially if you have really strong hands, like don't give it hell because you could actually be causing a possible short, you know, between the the grounding uh, leads and the the actual, you know, audio signal lead. So, uh, so yeah. So I, I remade a few of these, and sure enough, you know, my pedal board is sounding great now. So that's it. So I'm moving, and this is what happens when you crimp too hard. Um, so maybe this summer, uh, you might start seeing more DJ Mixer stuff from me. Another thing that's been holding up, uh, doing mixers and, uh, speakers is there's a couple integral op amps that have not been available for literally almost two years now. Yeah, I think maybe even two years. Um, it's my magic sauce. Uh, if I can't do a mod with these op amps, um, like I'm not sure if I want to, like if I knew for a fact that they will never exist ever, ever again, then sure, I'll, I'll switch to something else. But because I don't have to make rent with DJ Mixer mod money, I am just going to wait until it's right because, uh. That's my philosophy with the pro audio stuff that I did at Black Line Audio. I do not, um, no compromising on parts. And it's, don't just use any part willy-nilly just because uh, this part worked in this spot. And this device uh, doesn't necessarily mean that that same circuit in this other device is going to be the same. Because it's usually isn't but there's a lot of factors that go into that so yes till next time <laughs>